Okay, now. Yes. Hi, everybody. We're at the chat room. <laughs> we have to go to the chat room. So this is a special. I can't see the screen anymore now. I uh, because I went to the chat room. Yeah, but yes, but oh boy. Okay, forget it. This is Nelson. We're dealing with Nelson tonight. Uh, I got an idea. I'll move it right here to make this easier. There you go. For goodness sake. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is a very special KEM Top Talk. We're hoping that people are able to log in and watch this show. I'm your host, Maribel Blue. I'm your co-host, Justine Yanez. Can I have a lollipop, please? Oh, yeah. And, and I'm our special guest, Nelson Torres from WTF TV. And let me remind everybody that this is also a WTF collaboration because we are going to show this via not only on BronxNet and Brooklyn, and my the WTF podcast. Right. Because the reason why is because there's no live show tonight, so... Yes, exactly. I need, to, I need to give something for the fans, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. can we... I know that we have a lot of people who watch our show religiously, all you those, the religious fetish and kink community, yes. uh, who watch our show and are wondering right now why we're not taping from the Bottom Line Draft House. Because those of you who watch KEM Top Top know that we have been broadcasting live from the Bottom Line Draft House. Yes. And um, and we will no longer no. be taping there no. because we are finding better opportunities. Boycott! So, it explains why the, it also explains why the lighting is See, I've been trying to be nice about it, but you know what? Fuck it, okay? So, okay. You want me to go on this tangent? <laughs> it explains why the lighting is better. Go for it. I'll tell you what. I'll start it, and then you can help me finish it. So, apparently, tonight we, we're, we're filming from, a, from an undisclosed location. We're not going to tell anyone because apparently there's a lot of weirdos out there who are watching us and trying to find out where we are. And a lot of marabou fans. But, um, but, yes, those are the weirdos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we, we will soon hopefully be starting our show. We will be broadcasting from a different bar here in New York City, a different location. Yes. We don't want to give the location yet because it's not... It's not official, official, but a exactly. uh, different studio or bar we will be shooting from. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason we've stopped is because at the bottom line draft, bottom line draft house, we had live audience yes. there at the bar, and while a lot of them were big supporters of ours, there was, as I like to call him, a salty old pirate. Yes. Who exactly? Who was always there, and he was always there because he wasn't there to support the show or anything. He was there because he had nothing better to do with his life but watch young girls in small skirts walk by. Right, and while while they ignore him because he right. was just nobody. Oh, he was special. so gross. Yeah, I think he had wooden teeth. Right, lady. This is Lady, by the way, my new mascot. I'm in love with Lady. Oh, she's the new mascot. For my the show. dog just always happens to get into the show in one form. Or oh, I love her. I love her. Anyway, so. We did, when we take the show last that we had, it was with Zig the Foot King. It was with Zig the Foot King. Right. And DJ Gimp Versace. Right. And you can find them both on Twitter as those names. Yes. And they were really great guests. Great guests. We had a great show. We had, mm -hmm. we had Dr. Sue chatting right. from the room and everything like that. It was an amazing show. I don't think we're in the right chat room because there's no one here. Like, no one signed in. It's a fucking Mac. That's, That's the problem. I don't think it's right. You don't like the Mac? All right. Well, anyway. We're not Mac girls. Anyway, ah. so while we were doing the show last time, we found out that he was in the corner of the bar calling us all kinds of names. Like, uh, like you know, rhymes with cunt. <laughs> no, in other words, we had a irate person mm -hmm. who is going into the bar... And apparently, we were disturbing his his little whatever it is, his little picnic with his music and whatever. And when we're doing a show, which was very clear to the bar owner, we have to turn off the music. If not, the music is going to interfere, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. All you techies know exactly what I'm talking about. So, wait, where am I looking at? Am I looking at the computer or am I looking up here? Because I realize I'm... At the camera. Looking at the camera right there. Oh, sorry. So now I'm having like a moment over here. Okay, so... Remember a blue moment. It's... Shut up. And stop looking at my mouth. Why does he always do that? He's looking right at my mouth. <laughs> Just seeing it's like, weird. Don't look at my what? Mouth. Okay, anyway. The fact of the matter is that this person was extremely rude mm -hmm. and called us probably...
probably every name in the book. And threatened right. us. Right. He exactly. said that if we showed up the next week, right. that he, he has going to have for something us. for us. And so, I don't know what that was, and we really don't want to know what that is, because if it includes his wooden teeth, that would be extremely frightening. Ew. So the, the reason we... The reason that we're not there anymore is not because we were intimidated, because we definitely could probably take this old man down with one strike. Right. It. The reason we're not there anymore is because the 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 powers that be at Modern Life Draft House did not defend us. They didn't right. say anything. They didn't reprimand the gentleman. Mm -hmm. They. You know, one person. One person out of everybody that was going there and enjoying the show. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if this is like right. I'm like, it keeps going to stupid Firefox. I'm telling you, it's like ridiculous. Because there should be people in the chat room. Yeah. Is anybody in the chat room or? Yes, I usually have people in the chat room. Hmm. And I mean, can we do it from the phone? Anyway, we can't figure it out. If you're having, if you're having problems right now. Uh, in the chat room, or if you're in the chat room and it's we're not responding and we can't see you, is there a number they can call or text? You know what? Yes, you can actually call 347-913-5465. That actually spells 91-E-K-I-N-K. -K. So you can't even forget the number. It's all over Kinky Magazine. 347-913-E-Kink. Not yes, E kink. Right. That's, That's right. right. So exactly. three four seven nine one E kink. Right. If you're in the chat room right now and you can't have and you're having problems getting through and everything, um, I just I have no faith in Nelson. I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, the point to our show now now that we've cleared out why we're here in this undisclosed location, um, it's because. You know, we're moving on to bigger and better things. Right. Justine, you know, came into the show midway. She has, you know, she has been a big supporter of my show. I've been a big supporter of her show. You know, we've I've done Velvet Radio with her, and you know, she's here as my co-host. So it's not like you know, she's like a guest or something like that. I'm very excited to be doing so. And it's imperative to us as the host of the show, you know, br bringing you presentations and people of alternative lifestyles, porn stars, you know, people like Nelson, who comes from WTF-TV, who also interviews an assortment of different people, and he has his own show. I think all of us as hosts of, of, of a show, of this show, of, you know, of, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, that... We know that not everybody is going to like us and not everybody is going to agree with the things that we're saying. However, the people that do enjoy what it is that, that we're doing, we say, you know, thank you for your support. Thank you for sticking with us. And we're not going to be at the bottom line. That's fine. You know, um, we're moving on to bigger and better things. And that's what's important to us. And that's the message that we're trying to convey. We are not going to put ourselves at risk over some dumbass who hates women. And I, I refuse to be surrounded by that anyway. Right. You know, so we are in the process of working on other things. We're also in the process of perhaps even taking the show on location, which is something that I've discussed for a long period of time. Um, so there's a lot of things in the works. KEM Top Talk is not going to just be, you know, one place. We're definitely going to take you all around the world if we could, you know. Um, with that being said, we're here on this election night. I have my TV on and it's on mute. We're looking at the electoral votes as it stands right now. Obama only has three and Romney has... Um, it, it's gone now, so I don't know what it is, but clearly he has a little bit more. And I want to say to the world, what the fuck are you thinking? I mean, this is a really scary time for us. And I understand that, you know, everybody is having this whole economy issues. God only knows I am, but I'm not even going to go into that. Um, oh, he has 28, I think. Um, it's, it's a very important thing that, you know, people go out and vote. Um, I think voting polls have closed in some places. It's 7 p.m. Yes, the first, the first poll closed, I believe, at like 6 p.m. Yeah, and I think like the last one will close at 9 o'clock. I don't know where that is. But right now, Romney stands at 33 and Obama stands at 3. So this is like really, really scary. It's 7.41 here in New York. 
And, you know, we're, we're concerned, concerned because, because my whole thing is, is that if Romney becomes president of the United States, we're going to take the show to Canada. <laughs> Are people writing in that they can't get into the chat room? Is that I what your phone I is saying? I don't know because my phone was like going off. I know that Tomoko, Tomiko, mm -hmm. she was, um, she was twittering um, just a few minutes ago. Can people get into the chat room? This doesn't look like it's... It just doesn't look like our regular chat room. I don't know, but you know what? Maybe if I log into Ustream on my phone, you can get it there. I can um, mm -hmm. probably see the chat room from here. So, yes, go, go ahead. Just this, while you're logging into Ustream there, um, this, this whole Obama-Romney thing, you've really got to look at it as the lesser of two evils. So maybe there are things about Obama you don't like. Maybe there are things about Romney you don't like, but each one has another stance that, I mean, for some people outweigh the other, like the economy issue. And I mean, if you were watching the debates, and I've watched them twice now, over and over, this is, this is how much time you have on your hands when you're single, but I've watched the debates twice now, and when you do, like, I've, after watching them twice, I must say, Maribel, and you're not going to be happy about this, I, I was leaning more towards Romney. I was at first, too. Uh, you know, I was like, wait a minute. Uh, Obama wasn't really bringing a lot to the table. He was just being really arrogant and argumentative. He was kind of cutting down his opponent to raise his, uh, his appeal, whereas Romney really wasn't doing that. Romney, and whereas Obama kept saying he had a plan, but not a way to execute the plan, Romney took us through his his five-step, four-step, six-step programs of how he was going to execute what he said he was going to do. And you have to respect that. If you have a plan, you should tell me how you plan on delivering that plan. Right. On the other hand, though... Those windows? Those, yeah. On the other hand... So I gotta close all of them, then. Yeah, no, just... But don't close it. Go ahead, continue, Justine. On the other hand, can you always believe what you hear? I know I've been lied to by many, many men. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have such a big penis. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Close it and then reopen the chat room again. See if what are these technical issues? issues? Yes. Why is it opening in Firefox? This is what's fucking... Okay, wait. Close it. Oh, here we go. Oh, wait. Here it is. Here it is. We have two guests in the room. So how did you go back, go back to that? How did you okay, do that? That's what you need to go into that, like, that people icon thing yeah. and leave it on. I hit the click on guests. See, like, okay, so then it's not coming up for whatever reason because they don't have a, a, you know what it is? They don't have a Ustream account. So they're watching the show, but they're watching as guests, and that's what it is. Can you, like, shorten it so that we can? Well, place here, that's my mom. Hey, mom, thanks for watching. <laughs> I can't believe we're having uh, difficulties. Well, well, I know she's writing in. I know she's been writing in because she does that. Okay, so well, at least we got the chat room in order. So if you want to come into the chat room, we say come in, you know, field your questions. And it feels so serious because normally we're like, hi, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, you know, we're not only talking about the election and everything that's going on. We also wanted to talk about Exotica, and that's why we have Nelson here. Because Nelson um, plans on, on being at Exotica all weekend long. I plan on being there on Saturday. Um, doing some interviews and things of that nature. But we really wanted to talk about the election first. We wanted to talk about why, you know, we won't be shooting at the bottom line anymore and why, um, you know, I forget why. But go on. Um, I don't know what she's going to say, but... Um, no, I've lost track here. But basically, bottom line is I'm, I'm just distracted by YouTube sucking on lollipops here. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're sucking on lollipops and we're talking about the election. You can't get any better than that. And it's very distracting, too, you know, I must say. <laughs> Keep it in your pants, Nelson. Yeah, really. God. Is that, is that creepy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my goodness. And so if, you're, if you're watching this through WTF, I'm leaving the voicemail up so people can tell what you think of the show. So. Yes, exactly. So here's the thing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Exotica, and in between talking about Exotica, we're going to come back 
and talk about the election because right now Romney's at 33 and Obama is still stuck at three. In South Carolina. So I don't know what the fuck is going on, but hopefully these numbers will be in order because I'm going to tell you right now, if Romney, like, preliminary wins, I'm going to really demand a recount because this is absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. Can you know, I had, a, I had a talk with my mother, and I believe she's voting Romney. If she's in the chat room right now, I'd like to hear her opinion. Well, here is my thing. People were looking forward to change. Change. Were you looking forward to change, mm -hmm. Nelson? Mm -hmm. Were you looking forward Absolutely. to change? Do you think Obama has made some changes so far? Mm. He said he promised change. I don't think he stepped up to the plate the way he said he would. So I, I haven't seen a big change. Right. I mean, to be honest with you, yes, I run a magazine and I do a talk show, but don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here like a millionaire. I'm not sitting here making an assortment amount of money. I, too, have been looking for a job, and I've had very little success in finding How bad has the economy been? It's been just as bad. Yeah. And they're saying that it's actually the employment is actually unemployment is actually is down supposedly. Do you believe that? I don't know. I've never listen. I've never been one to to use the system that way. So I don't. I I've been unemployed before, definitely. I mean, but I've also been working still sixteen. What's going on, lady? She probably wants to get down. Oh well, too bad. Uh, <laughs> She's oh. like tired of sitting up there. Um, I've never, but I've never taken advantage of unemployment or anything like that. I've never, I mean, not, not advantage is the wrong word. I've just never utilized the system. So I, I don't, I, it's not, I'm not one to, to speak on unemployment and the rates. I mean, these are my, my tax dollars are helping pay for that. Right. And, I mean. It's, it's hard to find job work anywhere at all. Even if in the McDonald's, it's mm -hmm. not, it's very hard. Yeah, I don't know why. Exactly. I don't know why people be picking on a McDonald's store. I don't, know. I don't. I don't know either. But it's kind of ridiculous, you know, when people are trying to better themselves in their lives, and you have other people stopping you. See, I've always been the type of person. Um, I have a lot of people who get like really radical and extreme and start blaming like other races and stuff like that for what uh, it is that they're at in their life. I am not that kind of person. Yeah, no one to blame but yourself. That. Right, exactly. It's like, if you want to get somewhere in life, you need to learn how to do this. This country has come such a long way in things that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. One of the things, I mean, it's like, and, and I hate to put it like this, but I'm going to, um, is Exotica. I mean, if we, if we were, you know, some kind of communist state, we couldn't come together in a convention. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? And be able to celebrate sexuality and alternative living and alternative lifestyles, which is very, very well, important. Because that's people. the whole thing with communism. There is no alternative. Mm -hmm. It is It is what it is. It's that spoken word, and that's what's that. That is the rule. Um I mean, I'm very fortunate. I'm fortunate enough to be an extremely hilarious and, and uh, talented stand-up comedian. <laughs> I have a very lucrative career and said career. But, uh, so, I mean, the, the economy, maybe honest, has, hasn't really affected me that much. I was able to, under the Obama administration and everything, move from Miami. I know, she's like, I'm dying to get down. Um... I've been fortunate enough um, to be able to move to New York City from Miami, and, and I lived on my own for a while. And like, live I live in Manhattan, and it's it's been it's been good for me that I've been able to do that. There are a lot of people who lost their homes entirely and lived in cars and all that. So I mean, I'm fortunate enough, and we are all fortunate enough to still have roofs on our head and everything. Right. But however, we are at a cusp now where people are still being threatened on, on to lose everything, mm -hmm. everything that they have. Mm -hmm. So you really have to weigh your options heavily when you're voting today, if you haven't already. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, right now in Florida, it looks like uh, Obama's winning. Obama is ahead in Florida. That's a uh, strange. Florida's a Republican state. There are a lot of Latinos mm -hmm. in Florida, mm -hmm. and coming from Florida, you know, there's a lot of Latinos in Florida, and I know that Latinos. The the majority of Latinos are Republican, I believe. From what I know, what statistics say. I don't know. This chat room is not working. I know for a fact. 
because, because nobody's, nobody's writing anything. anything and yes, I know writing. Place here is writing yeah, stuff. I know that for a fact. All right, so let's. you want to go to the other chat room on that side? or? Yes, it's, and then somebody mentioned to, to, to Miko. She mentions here, Maribel, it's really difficult to find a job nowadays. But sometimes... Hold on, because I'm logging into the Twitter account so I could finish reading. But sometimes a job at McDonald's is what you have to work with at the moment. Yes. Well, absolutely. And it's nothing to scoff at, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, if you have a job and you're supporting yourself, and you're not abusing the the welfare system and the unemployment system, then good for you. You should be proud of whatever job you have because you're an American, and it's your right to have whatever job you choose. Not only that, too, there are people who do abuse the system. Absolutely. I've seen it for myself. There have been plenty of times that I have needed help, and I have gone to get that help, which is extremely mortifying. But And then you're you standing on this fucking line, and then somebody drives up in a... Um, what, are you, what are those big giant vans, an Escalade or whatever? Oh, yeah. And like stands on the line too, and then you're like standing there saying, um, "What the fuck am I doing wrong that this person right. just pulled up in an Escalade and is standing on the freaking welfare line?" I don't understand. That. How about when you go to the I go to the grocery store, and okay, I have nice things, I have my my name brands and everything like that, but I'm not on welfare and I don't abuse the system. But I'm at the grocery store and I'm thinking, okay, can I? I'm getting this and this and this, or I'm buying you know the generic brand of whatever. And the girl in front of me has her Louis Vuittons on and her Louis Vuitton purse and and all this stuff, and she's got seven kids and she's you know she's buying ten jugs of Ben and Jerry's ice cream and everything. She's paying for it with food stamps. Because they think they can afford it, with, even with food stamps. Be if you can afford, if you got seven kids and you can afford the Louis Vuitton, the twelve hundred dollar Louis Vuitton shoes and the two thousand dollar Louis Vuitton purse. And I know what it's real and it is. And the Chanel watch and this and that. Then get the fuck off of welfare. Stop abusing the system. Stop taking my tax dollars. Right. And use that money to feed your fucking kids. Exactly. Because exactly. that shit is... I want to rip those that fucking EBT card out of their hands when I see that. It's disgusting. Because well, there are think, people who need it who can't get it. Right. Or aren't getting enough of it who really do need it. But because you're abusing the system. Wasn't that the point to the welfare system anyway? It was right. created... Just in case somebody needed help. It was right. not created for you to stay on there right. forever and ever. It was created because we're a nation that stands together and we help our weak when they're falling. But what happens is that this is also a nation of greed. Mm -hmm. And these greedy fucking assholes will take everything that they can get. And you should be ashamed of yourself if, you're, if you don't need welfare and you're on it. If you need it and you're on it, then good for you. And if you're working at McDonald's and you're not on it, or if you are on it, and you have your job at McDonald's and you're trying to work your way to the top, good for you. Right. Good for you, because that's what this nation stands for. Exactly. Exactly. So, the numbers still stand right now at 33 Romney and 3 for Obama. And let's move on. Oh, what do we have? Look at, the, look at all this in the chat room. No, this is the video. Oh. Wait, I'm going into the chat room now. No. It's pretty accurate. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's like we're all looking at the same thing. <laughs> <What? laughs> and we have, I mean, we have people, oh, look. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's move, again, let's move away from the election for a minute and everything that we're talking about. Exotica is this weekend. Woo! Oh, and Maribel is going. I'm going. I will be there on Saturday, and I will be doing interviews, and Nelson will be there all weekend long. Exactly. Nelson has had I won't be there. We're, we're trying to get going? Justine there. I have. Aww. I know. Well, I have to work so that I'm not on welfare. <laughs> and I have, a comedy, <laughs> I have a comedy show Saturday night as well. And you've also been in Exotica yourself in the last few years. I've done Exotica four years in a row. I did two years in a row as, as an Exotica hottie, which is um, something we talked about earlier. Yeah, I don't know how I missed it either. I was there last year. All I was wearing was pasties and a pair of boy shorts. But um, the and the two that? years before that, I went as press with a different with a different company to interview the porn stars and stuff. Exotica is great. I love Exotica. I went to Exotica the first time last year. 
And it was a very, very interesting experience. Wait, you've never been there before prior last No, year. I've never been to Exotica. Whoa. Here's the irony of this. This is how we met, too, actually, yes. last year. Exactly one year ago. Yes. And, and you interviewed me. Exactly. And I forget what questions you were asking. I don't remember either. But all I remember is that that's how we met. And then we been, been keep in touch to this right, day. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. Love. It's almost Aww. like one year. Happy love. anniversary. It was love at first sight. No, my love does not want to hug. I can't get a hug. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> it was like... <gasps> Nelson, don't no. you don't you know you have to pay to play? Even a hug. Even a hug. You have to pay to play. Mm -mm. This that ain't the welfare funny. line. This shit ain't free. <laughs> so Nelson, share with us your experiences because you are well experienced with Exotica. Since you spend the whole weekend there. Right. How many Exotica conventions have you been at? Since Jersey, I've been going since two thousand and eight. And that would include the Miami one in 2010. Hmm. How much of Exotica has changed in all of the times that you've attended? Honestly. Has uh, it gotten bigger? Has it gotten smaller? Actually, the first two years, it was, you know, people still attend. But I think every year it's getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. More people are attending. Right. And a lot of people are going now, you know, than before. I mean, things have changed, you mm -hmm. know. It's like the first few years they had the legends of Exotica because I know some of the legends myself. Mm -hmm. Now they don't have it. I think those, some of those, majority of those legends mm -hmm. are like in their own booths with their right. different, different companies. Right. So, so now things have changed over the years and it's way, for the comparison of the AVN conventions, which I've been there myself, mm -hmm. they're more, let's put it this way, I think Exotica is more personable mm -hmm. than, than AVNs. If you want to have a comparison between Well, because the you can... Because at Exotica, you can, like, approach the porn stars. You can talk to them. You have to wait in line. But you can talk to them. They're willing to, to speak with you and sign things for you. As long as you're not a big fucking creep like Nelson. And Thank you. They're willing. I did. Do you know that? <laughs> Exotica. I still love it. Don't worry about it. Exotica 2010 in New Jersey. I did 2008, 2009 in Miami. And then 2010, when I was in New Jersey, I went on stage with um, I went on stage with Brie Olson, nice. with Brie Olson and uh, Electra Blue. No that name sounds familiar. Electra Blue is another porn star, and they had me fake an orgasm on stage on the microphone. And we those did of you, that. those we did of that you, all over the show. yes, those of you who watch KEM Talk Talk a lot, you guys know that uh, I can fake a good orgasm. And uh, I had to do it live on stage in front of everybody at Exotica in my little lingerie. Did you do the same one? No, I did one in Spanish. They had me speaking in Spanish. So I was like, happy, I, I, Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. What about the viewers that WTF would like to see that? If they're too creepy for you to do it now. They're, no. I, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Listen. I did WTF for two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Your, your watchers, your viewers... Are some fucked up, <laughs> crazy, weirdo, sadistic motherfuckers. And if they're watching right now, all I have to say is I love you guys. That's so you guys are awesome. That's you're insane. You're insane. Like you don't even. It's like they're missing a chromosome or they have an extra. Now you know. After you say that, you can fake an orgasm. They want to hear it now. It's like, oh, can you can you prove it? Oh, you know, and then like like for guy, for example, you know. So they can watch past episodes of KM Talk Talk and listen to it. I'm not doing it for them now. You get one time for free. That's it. I'm not doing that now. Oh. oh so she's not even paying attention? I was like looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying attention. Yeah, sorry, foot guy. But, um. No. <laughs> I was going to say something. I forgot. Oh, we were talking about Exotica. Yes, yeah, yeah. so you were talking about your experiences mm -hmm. and the changes. Do you think it's gotten better? I think it's gotten better. And not only really that, Aviant and Exotica are somehow collaborating for the last year mm -hmm. so far. And I think that's been a big improvement. And there's a difference between Aviant and Exotica. Aviants, they don't sell at all. I'm not, for some reason, they're not allowed in Vegas. Mm -hmm. But like an Exotic, they can sell their tapes and whatever else they need to sell. Mm -hmm. In Exotica. So there's a big, big, big difference between the two. But both of them equally are like close to like being the top two conventions as far as porn in the United States. Oh, they definitely now, are. You made a comment a couple of months ago to me 
Mm -hmm. that Exotica will no longer be featured in Los Angeles. I think they were doing a convention. They were doing it last year, I believe. And I I wanted to go, but I don't know if I can go. But yeah, for some reason, they just decided not to go. I guess, you know, from what I understand, for a lot of people that went, Mm -hmm. fans that of the show told me that it was a lack, it was a very small crowd, not many people went. And you would think that being it's California and it's like the porn capital of Mm-hmm. The United States for some strange reason and nobody attended. Well, why do you think that is? Maybe they have seen enough porn as it is. Why do you have to go there? No, <laughs> no, I think I, I think it has to do with the economy. You do? I definitely do because... Even in Los Angeles? Definitely. I definitely think it has to do with, with the economy. People don't People don't want to like go out and spend the money on something like that when they have to feed their families if they're, if they're watching porn for free. Oh! There's an update. Election. Obama has 78 while Romney has 71. Oh, look. The numbers changed. Nice. Hey. <laughs> nice. Um, hey. But... Yes, continue. I, I said I was going to But one thing I know about Exotica, they're definitely going to the right direction when they're heading to Atlantic City in April mm-hmm. of 2013. Yes. Yeah. Atlantic City. Oh, sense. that's right. I read that. Do you know? That email. Do you know why Alsace is better? So, and you've been to Miami Exotica, so you know. Miami Exotica, you can drink. They serve alcohol yes, at Exotica, and although sometimes it makes wait, for, I thought New Jersey you can. You cannot. New Jersey is a dry state, so at Exotica, New Jersey, they do not sell liquor. If you go in drunk, that's your prerogative. But they do not sell liquor at Exotica in New Jersey, at least the years that I've been. Because it's a dry state. This is why the strip clubs... And they also do it in Illinois, but I don't know about the drinking Absolutely true, because in New Jersey, New Jersey is a dry state, period. So the strip clubs in New Jersey can show full nudity, but they can't have alcohol. Mm-hmm. Right. So just, and, but in New York, it's only topless oh, because of alcohol. Oh, yes. That's so it's right. like the it same concept. Yes. It's the same concept for Exotica because there are naked, beautiful people right. there. Exactly. You can't have alcohol. You can't serve alcohol there. How, so I, when you do the Miami one, there's alcohol involved. Sometimes things do get rowdy or whatever. But people are having more fun. They're spending more money. They want to stay longer. Right. You're at a convention all day. You're not drinking. And you've just got sex in your face and everything. You're there for a couple of two or three hours. And you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm leaving. You don't really want to spend the money. You don't want to. So I think this is going to be a great thing for Exotica New York to move to Atlantic City as opposed to New Jersey. Because they will be able to have alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I think, I, I mean, I think it just, I, and I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm a huge advocate for alcoholism or, or drinking and, 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 you know, all of that and drug abuse. But when you're, those who do drink know you're more likely to spend more money while you're there. You're more likely to spend more time while you're there. So it's better for the convention as a whole. Mm-hmm. Which is, which is right. Liquor sales is who, Okay, so then let's get into interviews because you've interviewed a lot of people. Who were your best interviews at Exotica? Who was your most memorable interview? Besides you? <laughs> okay. I'm talking about porn stars. I'm like nobody. I'm just a freaking talk show host. Hey, I got to talk to you. I mean, the ones I've liked interview, uh, one was Lisa Ann. I interviewed him more than once. Um, Ron Jeremy's usually hysterical. Oh, he's great. He signed a thing for my mom when I interviewed him. <laughs> really? He, he, would, he would not... Let me interview him until he could see my breasts and pinch my nipple. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. And you let him? Yeah, it was Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an idiot wouldn't let Ron Jeremy? I'm like, oh my god, yeah, this is the nipple that Ron Jeremy pinched. Are you you know me? what's so? But you know what's so funny? I'll never forget it. There was um, I I the first movie that I had seen with Ron Jeremy was Caught from Behind Part Four. It was an anal movie. <laughs> And my friend downstairs, she used to get all of these porn movies. And it was funny because, you know, she was black. It was, was, you know, our black sister and stuff like that. And she would get, like, a lot of black porn movies. And my sister and I, we were, like, we were not into, for some reason, like, our mind psychologically, black people were different from, like, watching white people. Why? I don't know what that was. But whatever, I mean, like, we were young girls, what the fuck? So anyway, she rents this movie, Caught From Behind, part four. So we're watching it, and it's funny because at the time, her VCR, which was probably, and every time I talk about, like, certain things, like, back in the 80s, it's like, yeah, I'm, like, really in my 40s. VCR. (laughs) She was great. So 
we were watching the movie in the VCR, and her VCR had this feature that if she fast forward, you can hear the fast forward. So everybody sounded like munchkins, which is hilarious. You hear, and we would get such a kick out of it. And we were just, the, the court from behind, part four, Ron Jeremy was the anal doctor in this movie. So people would go into his office to be examined and he basically he would fuck them in the ass. He's too big. He's too big for anal sex. But I'm telling you, he did. That was the name of the movie. Tell you, look it up, Caught From Behind, part, part four, with Ron Jeremy. Everybody's going to Google it right you now. Know, uh, so wait, here's the thing. Now, my sister and I, we were going downstairs to my friend's house watching porn movies. We were young. My parents was not supposed to know that we were watching these movies. It was a secret because we were experimenting. So it so happens that at the time, Rodney Dangerfield, I think he had a variety show, and one of his guests was Ron Jeremy. Oh, my God, how funny. And my sister's watching the show, and she says out loud in front of my father, and my father loved it. Now, imagine a Puerto Rican household with a very strict Puerto Rican How father. old was she? We were young. And just looked at her and he said, what? And she was like, I mean. And I, I can't even remember. We didn't get hit or anything, if, this, if that's what you're thinking. But I can't remember what happened afterwards. It's the only part that I remember. I don't know how my sister explained herself out of that she watched a porn movie and that he was the anal doctor in one of these porn movies, you know, so it was pretty funny. So, um, yes, and that's the end of my story. <laughs> that's what I remember most about Ron Jeremy is that I had seen him in a movie called Cult for Behind Part 4 and he was the anal doctor. You know, he also does stand-up comedy. No, I yes. didn't know that. Yeah, he yeah. does it in his spare time. He does a uh, he does stand up comedy. He's actually more involved with it now than than anything else. He's actually very funny. I'm dying to do a show with him. Uh, just I would I would love to be able to like do a stand up show with him. Uh, three years ago at Exotica, I got to make out with Tara Patrick and nice. Jesse Jane. No yes. way. Yeah. And this was in Miami. This is Exotica Miami 2009. I missed wow, that. Wow, how was that? It was great. So I'm interviewing Jessie Jane, and she's like, oh, yeah. She's a, I love Jessie Jane. She's a sweetheart. We interviewed her on Velvet Radio. She's such a freaking sweetheart. She, you know, she's got like that voice, and she's so sweet. And she's like, so down to earth. She's like, yeah. She's like, oh, you're, you're, you know, she's like, telling me, she's like, oh, yeah, I think you're beautiful. And I'm like, me? Oh, my God, look at you. You're perfection. And then, I don't know, it just happened. We kissed. And then I'm interviewing Tara Patrick, and I'm, like, telling her, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I just kissed Jessie Jane. And Tara Patrick's basically like, well, who's the better kisser? And I was like, let's find out. So here we are, me and Tara Patrick are making out. Tara Patrick was fucking amazing. And we've got everybody on Exotica just staring at us like, oh. But let me ask you a question. Everyone was jealous of me. With that being said, it, Exotica is a very big convention. All of these things happen. Do you think that people do these things just for shock value? Of course. Why would is, it, is it shock Wait. value for you? Or did you truly did you want to do it and enjoy it? I mean, did it just I, happen? For me, for me, I guess it was somewhat shock value because I was there as an as a as a press as someone who was interviewing. So for me, it was oh, you traitor, <laughs> you bitch. Well, she is my dog. <laughs> you bitch. I thought our love was real. Oh, oh, don't even don't look at me with those eyes. Oh. Uh, uh, you were talking about making out with Tara I can't even with this bitch anymore oh. no uh, for me I guess it was a lot of shock value and I was you know for ratings and stuff like that and also it was it was for me, I was like, this is so cool. I get like every, oh, it's so cool. I get to make out with Tara Patrick and Jesse Jane and Ron Jerry and touch my boob. It's going to be so great. Well, um, listen, let me But ask for you, them, for them, that's no shock value. I mean, come on. That's true. They that's true. Exactly. But let's ask our guest, Nelson. Did you become make out a talk show? Yeah. <laughs> you know that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Nelson. Did you, did we tell you that this was a roast about you? <laughs> <laughs> Nelson Rose. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> having fun at my expense, aren't you? I have fun at everyone's expense. This is why I'm a stand-up comedian. I know. I, I only became she a stand-up... She fun of me, too. I only... I only, wow. I only became a stand-up show. comedian. She's made up sarcastic comments about me. It's very I'm funny. Sure. It's all out of love, though. I would never be... I, yeah, this is I'm sure I everybody else will be watching it very soon after this. <laughs> If you're really nice, like when we're just shooting offline, I will take off my blouse and show you my boobs. Oh! Not. <laughs> oh. I was like, whoa! Cheese, oh, everybody's watching it. I, I, I got my public access TV. Like, when did this become that kind of show? Hold on. Yeah, you got a fan that said more Maribel, more Maribel in Brooklyn. I don't know where he, who he is, but he's a big fan of me. Oh, that G-Man guy? No, 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 not G-Man. It's um, another guy. In he keeps calling every time you're not on, more Maribel, more Maribel. Oh, my God. Is, is, is it like, more cowbell, more cowbell? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> this guy can't get enough of you. I'm sure he has a shrine of you in his walls. Okay, like, that's It's like secretly really Nelson. Weird. Just so you know, it's yeah, secretly Nelson. Yeah, really <laughs> He's throwing his voice and calling into the show and not letting us know. Oh, so he's I'm, doing something technical. But yes, getting back to, um, to you became a talk show host. Why did you become a talk show host? Like, what, what was your calling in doing this? You started off your show as, it was a wrestling show. Well, and technically in some way it still is at this point. But I started this since 1994. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am, but... Um, yeah, I just wanted to be on TV. I'm just that's it. That's pretty much that. Nothing else, no bigger than that, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I just want. There's no anything like that would inspire me. I just wanted to be on TV, like you know, entertain or do something. Mm -hmm. And I think over the last few years, I've somehow progressed and learned a lot, not just from just hosting, but just everything else around me, like how to have. Some sort of etiquette. Uh, uh. How did you get into the whole exotica realm? Like, how did you find out about it? And why did you feel the need to go and be a part of this convention? Well, I actually did the erotica convention in 19, 2006. Mm -hmm. And that was the first convention I've ever done. This was Erotica, a, not exotica. No, no, not exotica. Exactly. Okay. This was before exotica. Mm -hmm. And this was in New York, in the city itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Is that still around? Erotica? No, they folded it. Okay. Wow. Um, long story short, I did it for one day, mm -hmm. and I interviewed some people, mm -hmm. and then, for some strange reason, I didn't go to Exotica. The first time they went to New York, they didn't call me to do invite any press that was interested. I think they needed a lot of press at that time. And, and I've been going since, in 2008. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What is it about wrestling and porn that goes so hand in hand? Because a lot of times when you watch something like about wrestling or something, there's always porn involved. Or like that yeah. Exotica in Miami, I don't think they had it in New Jersey last year, but Exotica in Miami, they always had a wrestling ring in the middle of the co of the convention and they would have like yes, wrestlers like I, wwe right. wrestlers mm -hmm. come in and like do demonstrations and stuff and i'm like but this is a porn convention what is it about wrestling and porn that go hand in hand as someone who's been in both realms i think i think it's i think mainly just to be simple i think it's a guy thing i think they just <laughs> for example I'll, I'll, I'll explain what i mean like for example when i went to miami just like what you just said when the one in 2010 they had some sort of weird UFC, like, MMA demonstration going on. They're showing, like, technical moves. And this guy's doing it to each other. And I found that a little strange as well. I mean, you know, like you said, you find it strange. Why is this, is this a porn convention where you have a little bit of a mix of wrestling? But they, but when you think about it, too, I think it goes hand with, uh, with the little fetish we call apartment wrestling. Mm -hmm. I've been in contact with those people lately. Fetish you call what? Apartment wrestling. You heard of this. Uh, What's apartment wrestling? It's basically... When all the girls sit down and watch their boyfriends wrestle on the floor. No, that's not And they're secretly, you know, being gay with each other in front of their girlfriends. <laughs> oh, I'm like, what? that's like, are you see how I'm looking at you too, like, all intently, like, No, no, huh? no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not what it is. Actually, apartment wrestling is where some of these women are actually wrestling each other in bikinis in the apartment, ironically. And sometimes they have, they wrestle men. They're wrestling them down. And it's funny that you mentioned... But that's just wrestling. How is that a fetish? Like, just because you're in an apartment? Well, you know what's funny is that in the next coming issue for Kinky Magazine, 
It's, it's the, the porn, porn star, star issue, and I interviewed Miss Juliet, and I was reading her answers, and she was talking about that, like she got involved with the whole glow thing. I think what glow thing? Glow. The glow, you know, the gorgeous um, ladies in wrestling. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Because her thing was was like she wanted to get into it, and she had people in her family telling her, "No, you can't do that. That's like a male thing." And she was like, "Why? Like this woman is like very muscular and tight. Have you seen pictures?" Yes, I've met her. She wanted to come on my show. She is like freaking gorgeous. You have to see her body is like completely tight. You know what I mean? Because she's all into this wrestling and things of that nature. But. Okay, okay, I'm back to apartment wrestling. Hold on, I'm so perplexed. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's just people. Hold on, it's just people that wrestle each other in their apartments and they get off like that. Well, they do have like stuff like that in clips for sale and stuff like that, where it's like women fighting men, pinning them down. And I don't know, like some guys do get off on that for some reason. But let me well, I mean, their bodies are touching. There's when a lot women, of women, like, right? When women are doing it, isn't the loser supposed to like endure some kind of sexual thing? That if would make more sense to me. Because I think I had seen that once before. There were like two women wrestling when I was like probably browsing around at different porn sites in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and there was these two women wrestling, and I think one of the women had to like eat out the other woman. Like whoever lost had to do something. Okay, that makes the sense. Person. Now there, there I can see the fetish, but if it's just wrestling and no like sexual gain or whatever after that, it's just in your apartment that it's just wrestling. What? Here's my question. Which could just be a fetish on its own, but don't call it a partner. I think here's my, my most important question of the evening. You know how, like, you have all of these TV shows. You know how, like, I watch all of these reality shows. I'm right, watching right. X Factor um, the other day, and I see that Mario <laughs> Lopez and Chloe Kardashian are, like, the hosts. Because what happens is after the auditions, then they go to, like, the live shows where they have, like, the hosts who talk to the judges because clearly the judges cannot host the show and be a judge at the same time. So last year in X Factor, they had a judge, this British guy, and everybody said he was really terrible, and he was. But, you know, now this year they have Mario Lopez and Khloe Kardashian. Now, Khloe Kardashian is very awkward. She's not a very... Um, not friendly. She's just a very awkward host. I think these people are so used to talking well, to their level of people. It's not. It's just she's got a touch of the downy. So it's I don't kind know what of that her, is. She's got a little bit of Down syndrome. Really? You can tell. You can tell she's the Kardashian that got a little bit of the Down syndrome. A little special, I guess. Yeah, she's she's. I mean, she's not little anything, but she's a. Uh, yeah, she's she, very tall. She's. But she's, uh, you know, I think she, she's the Kardashian that got the... And Mario that wrote the short is a very short guy. Like, he's talking to the contestants, you know what I mean? He's, like, talking to a 12-year-old kid, and his arm is, like, all the way up here. Like, what did you think, you know? They, and both, they both took the short bus, bus out of the birth canal. Yeah, okay. it's, it's very, very strange. So I'm getting to my point in a minute. Sorry. The point is, the point is, is that X Factor last year was supposed to be different from American Idol. It was supposed to signify uh, a range of people from all different, you know, parts of the city, all different ages, sizes, etc. And there was no like, American Idol. You have a limit. You have to be like no more than I don't know, eighteen or whatever. The you can't is. be over. I think it's like twenty. Eight, right. 20, Whereas X Factor. You know, they separate everybody into groups. They have the groups category, they have the over 25s, and then they have the under 25s, right. and the boys and the girls. Well, I forget how, how everything went, because um, it seems a little different this year. In watching the show and seeing Mario Lopez and Khloe Kardashian hosting the show, I felt like the X Factor jumped the shark, because now it has become a celebrity propaganda you having attend Exotica since 2008, do you feel, what What are your feelings of what's, what's going to be featured this year at Exotica? They're supposed to be having somebody perform. Yeah, Saturday. Naughty by Nature this year. Oh, right. Naughty by Nature, yeah. Last year, no, not last year. Yeah, last year, who was there? 
They had two life crew. Right. Like 2000, okay. 2010 was two life crew. I remember that one because I got on stage with them. I was like, two life crew. Let's say, for example, Exotica had Jay Z come in and perform. Jay Z is a very big artist. Jay Z's lame. He's, Sorry, I had to say it. Uh, well, you know, he's a big artist because that's what people put him by. But I don't own any of his music. Sorry, because I'm just not into you like that. Right. Thank you. But anyway, if Jay Z performed at Exotica, mm-hmm. do you believe? That Exotica would be jumping the shark by having somebody like Jay Z come and perform. Well, if he is a big, big name currently now. Yes. I would say yes, because I'm not to, not to, not, nothing against Naughty by Nature. I mean, they they they, they did what they did a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're still famous to some degree. I mean, they are. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is I think the difference between Jay Z because right now he's big and he's a multi-millionaire. But I right. question that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess I think maybe because if because he's a he's a current big celebrity right now and just for him to be there is probably will be a step down mm-hmm. and in some people's eyes not my eyes but to other people's eyes right. and that would be considered to jump in the shark right so I mean I'm not gonna say from I'm just saying saying it from my opinion I'm saying it for other people in general they'll probably think it's a step down for Jay Z mm-hmm. so okay all right well that makes sense I think my my thing is is that. Um, that but not even Jay Z exactly like any like Rob Zombie if he showed up and did it or whatever you're you like, <laughs> <laughs> she just loves like, Rob Zombie like, stop breathing it's okay, it's okay. She just went from Jay Z to Rob Zombie and then she just went to have a heart attack but she's not <laughs> it's okay we're gonna be okay we're gonna be okay <laughs> but what I'm saying is like it doesn't necessarily we're not talk, necessarily talking about that person we're saying like if it were somebody who was like big celebrity or like, I mean, I could totally see them having somebody little like Flavor Flav next year or something. Like, yeah, but see, that's uh, tacky. It's so but tacky. here's the whole thing: it's, it's so like tacky. the reason why I ask that is because Exotica is supposed to be a convention where everybody celebrates all of their different alternative lifestyles, beliefs, and like you said, they get to meet porn stars and things of that nature. Do you think? For any of you, do you think it will ever get old? Because I feel like I'm talking to the more experienced people. I've only been there once before, so I don't know what it was like. I mean, it gets better every year. I mean, let's put it this way: it gets better every year, but at the same token, it does get a little bit repetitive once Mm -hmm. in a while every year. Like it's like the same routine when you go to the porn convention. If you've never been there, if you've been there once, it's great, whatever. But if you've been there every single year, Mm -hmm. it does become a little repetitive. So. so not what I'm sorry, that's pretty no, no, that's pretty much it. Oh, so what I when I notice when they have like the musical guests and the performers and stuff like that, has anybody ever been to a lowrider show? The lowrider low car shows, rider? yeah, the, the car shows the that car they shows. have right there. So, a lowrider is a car show, and what they do is they, they basically show I mean, there's new cars showcased as well, but it's basically an, an homage to lowriders, uh, you know, metal cast cars like uh. You know, like what they mm-hmm. call donks and caprices and Apollos and stuff like that. Stuff like that and they've been tricked out. Anyway, it's a car show. But they also have musical guests that come on and do their thing. Like they had like, um, I think they had Naughty by Nature one year and stuff like that. And like Crazy Legs and people like that. And it's like the people that go to these conventions, much like Exotica, they're there for one thing. That's their that's their hobby, that's their, what they enjoy, so mm-hmm. porn or cars or whatever, then you have this distraction, it's literally just a distraction of a bunch of people jumping around on stage playing music that maybe you like, maybe you don't like, but that's not what you're there for. Mm-hmm. So let's say you've got a thousand people right now at Exotica, and they're there for the porn convention, they're all in this room at one time, mm-hmm. a thousand people, mm-hmm. and Naughty by Nature comes on stage, maybe a hundred out of those thousand are going to flock to the stage and, 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 you know, to have a good time listening to that music. Mm-hmm. But that's 10% right. of the people there might have a good time for that. 1% of the people are only going to see Naughty by Nature, and that's what they like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what does that mean? Look how the numbers. Of what? Of uh, the YouTube channel. Oh. 8919. What does that mean? If that's a lot of numbers. I don't know what that means. Um, we have over 8,000... 8,900 8, views of in total that people have been watching KEM Top Talk. Nice. Thank you very much. The polls are in. 8,900. <laughs> Yay. There you go. And so far, Obama's, Obama's winning. Winning, winning. winning. 64 nice. to 56. 56. So but, uh, yeah, not to go on a tangent, but, I mean, to me, it's like it's have something related to the convention. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I would love to see the, uh, what are those girls that got arrested for... 
in, in no, this show? Pussy something. I don't know. Pussy right. I'd like yeah. to see Pussy right perform at Exotico. Because at least it has something to do with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'd like to see Pussy Riot at Exotica. Well, here in America, we will give you work, Pussy Riot. How come Exotica doesn't take their convention to like a different country? Are they you know, allowed I, to do that? Because it's not taboo in different countries and it wouldn't sell. Because different countries are more open about their sexuality than America is. Mm-hmm. And it's not taboo over there. And people will do the news, the regular news, naked in naked other news, countries. Which is and how regular, I- regular commercials. Re- oh my God, the funniest thing. When I, was, when I was little, not little, but like a teenager, my mother, she's watching, she's going to remember this. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go into broadcasting. I was like, well, fuck it. And this is back when I was thinner, of course. I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just get my degree in broadcasting and move to Germany and do the naked news. They make much more money. <laughs> There's the... Um... Well, then look at the Spanish channel. I mean, you have the whole... The women that... You know, yeah, they're like... They're like, you know... But the, yeah. and the thing is, is that... And the thing is, is that... No, uh... <laughs> No, that's my track. I ah. can say murió. <laughs> en la calle, I don't know. Ocho. En la calle, ocho. <laughs> Elian González <laughs> se regresó. <laughs> um, no, but like... Now I'm distracted. <laughs> yeah, in other countries, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be like a big deal to have a porn convention. It wouldn't be like, oh my God. Por- like, it's so fucking ridiculous. Well, see, then that begs the question because here we are on election night and, you know, you have two people that are vying for the presidency and one of the biggest things was about women about controlling them and this whole legitimate rape thing. We t- we talked about that in previous KEM Top Talks. Why do you think that the U.S. has such a a thing with, like, sex? Why is that? We're such sexual beings. We're so proud of who we are. It's because we're founded on cr- this country, this nation, is founded on Christian beliefs and morals. So although we are not... We're not dire- directly forced to uh, study or believe in one religion, indirectly, we are. It's on our money, mm-hmm. which is something we deal with every day. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's frowned upon the pornography and the sex and everything. We're founded on Christian beliefs, unfortunately. Not unfortunately, but unfortunately in this day and age right now, we're still adhering to these old-fashioned you know, morals and standards and, and that we're women and Mm -hmm. women are, are, you know, women's rights, women's rights. But then here in the United States, women are not, are still not revered Mm -hmm. as, as the dominant species. Although we all know very well that we are. Yeah, really. What do you think about that, Nelson? You agree, right? Absolutely. (laughs) I I think this, I think this whole country is a bunch of horn dogs. I think so too. Yeah, pretty I much so too. <laughs> right, it's 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 already eight twenty eight. Oh my time. god! Yeah, we've been on for like an hour. Yeah, yeah so hopefully somebody was watching us. <laughs> I'm not at YouTube or on WTF TV. But anyway, what does everyone think of my new glasses? I wanted those of you who've been watching before. I, I fucked up my eyesight. I'm getting old. I'm, I'm starting to get my mother's eyes, and I, it turns out turns out I'm far sighted. Oh, and I, I have so to I wear both of them too now. <laughs> I have to. I have to wear glasses. They say I want to know what happens when you turn four. I want to know: should I keep the glasses? I remember that in about five years. <laughs> should I keep the glasses or should I go to contacts? Um, Contact lenses. I think you should keep the glasses. You know, when I was growing up, glasses was not a cool thing. People made fun of you for wearing glasses. I lost count on how many times I was called four eyes. <laughs> Now everybody wants to wear them. Everybody wants to be blind, and it's not a fun thing. It's not fun. You know. I, estoy poniendo vieja. I feel so old. I feel, but on the other hand, I also kind of feel like, your books are overdue. Now you see? see it, it works perfectly. Every time. 
sexy school teacher, sexy secretary, sexy librarian, need I say more? There you go. Okay. All right, so. Uh, we are going to end the show, and anybody who's watching it, we're like now in a commercial because I have the laptop on the other screen, so when you come back, you're going to be like, oh, there was a fucking commercial. In some places. Uh, <laughs> those, yeah. I just want to thank, thank both of you to be on the special broadcast of the Tia TV as well. And if, if you want to see the rest of the show, because it's like an hour, go to their YouTube page and see yes. the show as an entirety. But you've seen the 28-minute version of it because it's, I had to condense it. Right. So see WTF TV. Yeah, but you're going to just watch, go to their YouTube page for the entire show. And it was pretty cool. And just want to thank you guys for coming on. Yes, yes, thank you. And tell us what you, and tell us what you think of the whole versa. thing. How can our viewers follow you, Nelson? Also, you can follow me at WTF TV. That's my Twitter page. That's my Twitter account, at WTF TV. Pretty simple. And my YouTube page is WTF World TV. Pretty yes. simple there, too, so. And Justine is also working on her page. She has a website, JustineGiannis.com. L-L-A-N-E-S. And, of course, you can always visit me at MaribelBlue.com. KinkyMagazine.com, which we're having the porn star issue, which will be up on Thursday. I got to get on top of the people that uh, I interviewed for this issue. But like I said before, I interviewed Miss Juliet, Kelly Shabari. Um, Miss Juliet will be coming on my show soon. <laughs> she wants to come on. And of course, you can catch all the shows on KEMTopTalk.com. And I have all of the links from the Ustream. And uh, the YouTube page embedded in that page. In case you can't find the YouTube page, you know that you can find all the videos on KEMTopTalk.com. And like uh, Justine and I said before, you know, we're, we're looking to move the show up. And we did set up a donation page. You can donate. It's only $5. We're not asking for a lot. I know there's a lot of things going on with the hurricane and things of that nature. And, um, of course, you know, we reach out to those who have been affected by the hurricane, which is really, really and we a you to thing as well. here in New York. And tomorrow they're saying that we have a nor'easter, which is not good. <laughs> um, I don't know why we're getting fucked in New York, but, you know, for some reason we are It's because right Exotica's here this month. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, that's what it is. <laughs> All right. We so. want to thank Nelson for being on the show and uh, and vice versa. <laughs> and we want to thank you guys for coming on. <laughs> and always come back in the show anytime. Uh, we want to thank everyone who watched tonight. Yes. Uh, if you didn't watch tonight and you're watching this on a stream, it's probably because you were voting today. So we want to thank you for that as well. Yes. Thank you for, for being a patriot. And uh, people have fought really hard for the right for a lot of you to vote. Absolutely. So please do take advantage of that. It's, it's really important. And, and, you know, God bless America. I really hope. Yes. Man, I hope we can pull through this. What, you know, whatever happens. All right. <laughs> you can all right. write. Everybody you can thanks you. Maribel thanks you. Yes. I thank you. We all thank you. Well, so. wait. You, you can see. follow me on Twitter. Yes. I need more Twitter follows. At Justine Giannis. J-U-S-T-I-N-E-L-L-A-N-E-S. Yes, so you can follow me at MaribelBlue.com because and I forgot about that. <laughs> follow me on WTF TV. At okay. WTF TV. <laughs> there, All right. But. All right, people. Thank you. And we will see you guys next time, people. Bye. 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 See ya. See ya. Oh, God. Hope you oh, had a Obama. good time. Bye. <laughs> Hope you had a good, good morning. You gotta stop the broadcast before Maribel keeps Bye singing. Now. Ah!